Welcome back to Fantastic Pains and How We Hide Them. I'm not Chris. And I'm not Karina. But we're here together. As usual. Yep. Um, and today's episode is going to be kind of interesting because we had some more interactions go on last week. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of, a lot. We had comments that were very interesting though. Yes. They, they, they bring up some good points. Yes. And we'll go into that. Yeah. So strap in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bo Burnham playing in the background of my brain. Apparently. Constantly. <laughs> it never stops. <laughs> Turn it off. No. No. It's just like Jen's Let's rant. Let's rock. No. It's always inside. <laughs> when he listens to it over and over. I don't. <laughs> I do. It's but nothing I like don't that. do it when she's around. I, I consciously don't do it when she's around. So, like, it bothered me <laughs> that she was calling me up. But it's like, I go out of my way to save you from listening to it. So... <laughs> Except this morning, I was just, just like force feed it to her. She needs to understand the masterpiece and glory, yeah, in its full glory. <laughs> well, it's there now, especially this morning. I, I turned it up really loud. It was singing nice. it, and Jen waited to to come in at one of the right points. Oh, the 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 FaceTiming with my mom. She oh. came in at, at when Dad says, "How you doing, Bud?" <laughs> so she opened the door dramatically and went, "How you doing, Bud?" It's like, "Good job, Jen." Yeah. Hey. We've converted you. I appreciate this. You want to start off with the weekly recap check-in? The re recheck. The the weekly re wreck. The 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 weekly Rick. <laughs> the weekly Rick rack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly that. And knickknacks and. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> left and right and to did, and fro. <laughs> did you have a week or not? I can't tell anymore. <laughs> like no, I didn't exist for the what last week. What is a week? <laughs> what was last? Where week? have I been? Oh yeah, I I'll start. Okay. Because I had my tooth pulled. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. My face is all swollen and hurts, but... On Tuesday, huh? Yes. Yeah. So it's been a while. It should be fine now, but it's not. It's still very angry. Because mm. he dislocated my jaw and <laughs> he's speed run <laughs> ripping it out. He was like, I got three minutes and I'm going to rip this thing out. <laughs> well, and you could feel the, f- the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, like halfway through. He cracked it and I was like, cool, I don't feel it. And then he started pulling on it and I was like, cool, don't feel it. And then... He went in for the shards of the roots, and then I was like, oh, I feel this. And that's like where it gets really sharp. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, my God, you're electrocuting me in my bones. Yeah. Please stop. Well, it's like when I got the first root canal, it was botched. The guy didn't burn, like, he didn't dig out the roots or the nerves. He didn't go far enough. No, there's still roots, so it still hurts. Oh, my God. Like, if I don't take take care of this tooth especially. So that was my week. I did that, and then I edited a lot. We've been doing TikTok. Yep. And and we did a, a impromptu Wednesday episode where we interviewed my daughter, which was really which cute. Is super sweet. Yeah, I like that one. It, it was, was good. Cute. Um, and that was my week. It was it was shitty, but yeah. not not as bad as it could have been because the tooth is gone. I'm just happy. Yeah. We also had Fourth of July. Oh my god. Over this week. It was a long week. Around Sunday. That was so draining. It was a very long weekend, and I. I wasn't sure I was going to make it. No, we had to like recover for two days afterwards. Like Monday yeah. and Tuesday didn't exist. No, I don't even think we like talked to each other. Nope, we didn't were do just, shit. Like both of us off the radar until I got the tooth pulled on Tuesday. Yeah, and I was like getting it pulled, <laughs> like in the in the office waiting for them to finish numbing me. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's been a week. So Tuesday I had follow up with the PT who's like I think maybe I can help so let me try yeah um and it was just a lot of intake so we'll have to see what happens next appointment so next appointment she's going to try internal manipulation which is what it is yeah it is what it is I don't really care breaking up a tissue yeah I'm like do whatever you can or think you can do I will sit here yeah no that's how I am <laughs> I will show up let's let's give it a shot you think it'll help let's do it yeah yeah well that's exactly it i'm like if it could help why not try Mm -hmm. let's try and then i have an appointment with my primary on tuesday this coming tuesday um and then we'll go over everything again (laughs) fun times yeah yeah it was also a really bad potsy week yeah oh and i think partially it's the heat yeah for sure yeah because, like, every time I go outside, I'm like, oh, we're passing out? Good. <laughs> yeah. Fun. Wonderful. Oh, my God. <laughs> I almost blacked out down the stairs earlier. Oh, my God. That's not a good place to do that. No. I sat down. I was smart. Good. I did what I was supposed <laughs> to do. 
<laughs> but I, I got up real quick and ran to the stairs and was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I know. That's the worst when you like get up quickly and you get like, I don't know, you move fast enough that it doesn't catch up with you for a second. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, where did the planet go? <laughs> yeah. I'm in free fall. <laughs> where but I'm am not. I? <laughs> <laughs> what, what about your thing here? Oh my goodness gracious, this was the best part of my week and probably my year. Um, and my husband has won the anniversary. <laughs> so our eight year marriage anniversary is coming up and he has been working on this project for me for, it was like 180 hours yeah. of work in complete secret. Um, well, from you. Yes. Yeah, you knew. So yeah, so he in complete secret created this lovely thing. Um which I adore and love and I'm so excited about. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's catching it. I don't know. It's like glary a little there bit. You there you go, yeah. Go. That's better. Um, and then this is the part that you'll like. The wood is raw pine from Grand Lake. <laughs> yes. That he built this lovely frame out of. Oh, I was wondering about the woodwork because it's yeah. really nice. And he burned little like hoof prints in. And it says our hoof beats are louder, which I've never heard before, but I absolutely adore. Yeah. So, yeah. So this was my... <laughs> anniversary present and he won he, he wins Here, watch. he does move the cat this is the funny part ready so he also painted this piece of wood <laughs> <laughs> and when i went to open it he goes how much do i love you and then this is wrapped in a little note that just says i would even learn to paint for you oh so he taught himself how to paint so that i would have a paint buddy nice which is the sweetest thing yeah he, so, was, he was asking us, uh, like, what we oh, should do to so change cute. it. It's nice. I like I like how it turned out. It's really I good. I really, really like it. He did a really good job. It looks better in person. Yeah. Well, and it's huge. Yeah. Well, like, I, you inspired, he inspired my my sister-in-law to do art for her significant other and her, aww. so. Yeah. It's we put it, on. I put it out in the Facebook groups, and they absolutely adored it. And it's just fun. It's nice to have like, it was very strange. This was something I was reflecting on earlier in the week was that our relationship is goals for some people and it doesn't feel that way. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird to have other people be like, oh my God, your man's the best. And I'm like, I'm aware. Thank you. <laughs> I know. That's why I've kept him for 12 years. <laughs> oh man, I want to hit goals with Jen someday. <laughs> we'll function together <laughs> somehow <laughs> we'll learn to communicate it's only been like 14 15 years yeah it's fine <laughs> <laughs> hmm. but yes so that was my gift and my pride and joy that yeah. i hung on my side of the bedroom like over my <laughs> my bedside table nice yeah i love it i'm so happy Good. Yes. So that was lovely. And my heart was very full from all of that. It was great. And I'm, I told <laughs> I told my husband, I was like, you know how I don't like stuff? This is a stuff that we need to insure for like a million dollars. Right. Because if it ever is destroyed or even just damaged a little bit, I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah. So. This is the stuff that I, I care about. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It was very, very thoughtful. And very sweet. And a lot of work. I and can't nobody believe... ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really impressed. He told Jen, which is danger <laughs> move right there. He showed Jen. Yeah. I got to see well, I was pictures of it. Yeah. And he was like, you had no inkling of what was going on, huh? And I was like, nope. I did not have a guess at all. That's his way of saying, did Chris fuck it up? I did not <laughs> did fuck it up. Did somebody fuck it up? I didn't drop the ball. He did a very good job. I'm very happy. 10 out of 10. So cute. <laughs> Keep him. Yes. Forever. <laughs> Everyone's like, lock him down. I'm like. Lock him down. Quick. Tie him up. <laughs> you know how we're married? We're extra married now. Now we're double married? Double married. <laughs> you can't leave. Yeah. But it was super sweet because it was also in the wake of <laughs> having that discussion again of com coming back and going. If you ever decided that this wasn't okay for you, you yeah. would let me know, right? And he was like, you're so stupid. <laughs> He's like, am I really good at hiding anything from you ever? I was like, well, no, but. <laughs> yeah, no shit. That's great. So, yeah. 
I'm happy. So cute. And then he he keeps making fun of me because I like the piece of wood. Because it's texturally fun and interesting. Yeah, you can see it. It's it's just, ugh, I like it. <laughs> it. It feels good to my eyes. It's that synesthesia piece. Yeah. <laughs> Where I'm like, it feels nice, but for my eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not weird. Well, yeah. That's good. Yeah. The best. Very happy. What else happened this week? Nothing. Yeah, not a lot. The week didn't exist. We saw each other on Sunday for the 4th yeah. and for Baba's birthday. Yep. And then we edited together. Yep. A couple yesterday. Day before yesterday? I don't know. Did I have a day off? There was a day in between Wednesday. Yeah. We we did some editing on Wednesday. Okay. Or Thursday. I think it was Thursday. Thursday sounds right. Yeah. This week's been weird. I'm like, I don't know what days are. Yeah. <laughs> Everything feels like yesterday and 100 years ago at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, lovely. <laughs> like I don't know I have no idea what anything is ever you want to start at the top of the subject sure we're hiding behind the cat <laughs> Here's it's our idea. notes that right. we're gonna not so sneakily look at <laughs> look at me being stealthy <laughs> <laughs> just, just, uh, so so this is something Jen suggested we talk about yeah because um, it's been being brought up in, in discussions on mm-hmm. the interwebs yes. about medical gaslighting yep and how we've experienced that throughout time well and how it can play into our imposter syndrome at the end it's where mine comes from i'm pretty sure yeah well no i had it before we we had parental gaslighting as well so makes sense (laughs) we just were gaslit from all corners (laughs) (laughs) just (laughs) no there is no reality people have to tell you what's going on great great it's fair cool (laughs) yeah um I know you had a couple examples. Um, yeah, I was trying to think. A lot of them are diagnosis journey. Mm-hmm. But you were saying something about, you know, what was it? And it, it really struck a chord with my brain. And my brain was like, yes. Um, being told it's this other thing and that it's fine and normal. Oh, yeah. That was my entire like young adulthood with my shoulders yeah which were very much messed up they're like you're active of course they hurt yeah or you're not active enough exactly you type so it's clearly atrophy or just exercise the more it was never like they never felt it they never they never took me seriously at all yeah at all and god that that messed me up for a long time because it wasn't until I was 27 that we got them actually looked at Mm -hmm. like imaging. Like I found a doctor who was like, Oh, that's not normal. You can't raise your arm past here. (laughs) Like, Nope, I can if I go like this and then I go Uh up. You have to like do the Jimmy thing. Yeah. Yeah. I just threw mine out. Great. (laughs) It kind of hurt when I did it, but (laughs) I need to get my shoulders. Yeah. My shoulders need to be redone. It's about time. But it's funny that, you know, like your body remembers the procedure to get up and over and in like, Hey, now I can reach something above my head. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but how dare you try to go like this yeah it just doesn't happen yeah oh man yeah so and there was another one. Oh, the kidney thing was pretty funny that we were talking about um when i had side pain i had to see a nephrologist which is a kidney specialist and they wanted to biopsy the kidney and make sure everything was okay because the pain was it ran across where the kidney was yeah or it still does <laughs> but it turned out to be a, a spinal thing uh, but when they were doing the test the guy was treating me like I was insane and and that I was that I couldn't be in as much pain as I said I was and that I was on I was on a high dose of meds yeah uh, at the time from pain management not like even a primary like I, the pain management was like this is what you need to be on um, and he just he was ignoring me he was really rude he was he just threw me off and then we went and we did it and I was giggling (laughs) when they were doing the actual biopsy. He's like, what's funny? It's like, Oh, it just really hurts. And that's how I cope with pain. It's like giggle or, you know what I mean? Like you laugh because you're like, this is ridiculous and it hurts. Yeah. Um, And it was after that, that he started treating me like I was legit. He was like, Oh, I I understand how you work now. (laughs) You you are in pain because I just ripped into your kidney and you giggled. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's like when we, um, before when we talked about the ER, yeah. Where they have to put you through whatever uncomfortable thing mm-hmm. before they're willing to believe you. Trial by fire. Yeah. They're like, well, if you've really got a problem, 
you're not going to mind if we poke and prod at you and make it really uncomfortable or whatever, whatever. Yeah. And so they do a lot of that. So, yeah, there's a lot of that at, like, the emergency room. Um, The first time I ever went to the ER was because I had watched a vein in my hand blow up. Oh, yeah. And then pop and leave it blue. And... Which when is I alarming. Told, yeah. Well, when I told my father-in-law, he was like, you need to like go talk to somebody because if that happens like in your brain, you're going to die. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, you don't want to. Okay. 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 And so I did like the nurse's hotline and she told me to go. Yeah. And so I went and I was explaining and he was like, well, it's dark. So it's from, it's not even from today. Like that bruise has been there for a long time and blah, 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 blah. I was like, no, I watched it happen. Yeah. What? No, you didn't. You're making it up. Yeah. It was clearly a couple of days ago, and you didn't see it happen. Well, and that's the last time I ever went to like the actual ER. Yeah. So I was like, that was a shite load of money mm-hmm. for nothing. And well, to be gaslit yeah, and told exactly. that I'm crazy and, yeah, not what I needed in my life. No. And so I've not been to an emergency room since. Fair. <laughs> it's urgent care or nothing. Well, they take you more seriously at urgent care. Yeah. Well, and I've had people be like, well, it's your posture that's the problem. Or I've had people. All right. Um, what, is, what are the other ones? I have EDS, so of course my yeah. posture is going to be off. Weight is another one that oh. is, a ta- is a subject for gaslighting a lot. Um, I didn't have that problem quite as much, but I know a lot of women especially have that problem. Where you go and you want to be taken seriously and they look at you and they go, huh, you just need to lose weight. And then you'll be fine. That's fantastic. Lose weight. It'll cure your EDS. <laughs> It'll cure this problem you're having. Yeah. That's totally unrelated. Wow. Yeah. And then I know Jen's had the same thing going. Yeah. Jen has kidney problems. Not like, you know, problems, but she she generates kidney stones if she eats too much meat, red meat. Like mad. Like we went in one time and she had um, 20 something kidney stones. Oh, Jesus. And some of them were sizable. Like they were worried about needing to break them up. Ow. So she goes in when she has kidney pain. Because she wants to make sure she doesn't have to get something broken up or anything. But every time she goes in, at least recently, um, she always gets blown off because it's got to be um, her period or, um, you know, just, you know, stomach pains. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not like she knows the feeling of kidney stones. Right. It's pretty acute. People who go through them understand. But no, she gets blown off every time. Yeah. It's that jaded thing. Yeah. Where they're like... <laughs> Clearly, you're an idiot and you've never felt your period before. Yeah. And don't you know, it can be different. <laughs> yeah. Cool, buddy. I, I'm not new to this. <laughs> yeah, Jen. Jen's reactions are always classic. She gets very upset. Well, it's stupid. It is. It's really, really dumb. <laughs> and I know a ton of people deal with the um, lose weight one. That's like the most common one that I've seen. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think of what other ones are. God, that would piss me off. You go in for something serious, like serious to you. Like, oh, yeah. no, my, I keep dislocating this thing. I'll just lose weight. Yeah. Can we fix the problem, please? Right. That would be fantastic. Yeah. No, we're just going to make you feel bad. And yeah. Tell no. you it's your fault. Your weight's your problem. Oh, cool. So now I'm fat and you won't help me. That's great. Wonderful. <laughs> exactly. I had the opposite. I had. Oh, um, yeah. Because. I don't know. I don't know what it is. To this day, you can still see my heartbeat in my oh, yeah. stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Get that. Um, and then I was having like spasms there and they were worried it was like aortic aneurysm. Yep. And then I went in and I saw somebody. I don't even remember. I think this was pre Kaiser maybe. And she was like, oh, it's just because you're thin. If you gain weight, it'll go away. It doesn't. Nope. <laughs> it doesn't. I have gained weight. It's still there. I've and it's visible. <laughs> and I still do it. You're losing weight now, though. Truth. I don't feel like I am, though. I feel like I'm gaining weight at an really? astronomical rate. I'm like, oh, God, I'm just so fat. <laughs> it's your shrinking. Well, it's the same thing with, like, the subscriber count. We were so excited we hit 50, but my brain now is like, that's that's too many. It's, it's a it's lie. 36. 36. It's going to be 36. You guys are 36 forever. I'm sorry. All 36 of you. <laughs> I'm not trying to cut people out, but my brain can't handle the fact that maybe people enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with you? So there's only 36 of you and you don't like it. Let's, let's all agree. You're only here to hate on it. Clearly. <laughs> Without leaving comments. 
the healthy brain <laughs> mechanisms going on there. Don't be like me. Oh my Positive gosh. Positive self talk. There was also that uh, I was in the forum. This was just a stupid one. It was really funny. Um, talking about how our clothes twist on our bodies. Oh yeah. So seams never run the right way and they get all twisted up. And they're like, why does that happen? And I've noticed that it's because of the abnormal rotation mm-hmm. when we're moving. And so as we're rotating, we're sliding it ever so slightly. Right. And then because of the abnormal rotation, because of the hyper uh, mobility, we wind up with our seams all over the stupid place. Oh, my God. I never even noticed it. But thinking back now, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. That is something that I've I've noticed, at least. Yeah. And it's really fucking annoying sometimes. It is. It cracks me up. Wow. But yes. Thanks that for is, that. This is a zebra <laughs> thing, and it's because we move weird. Yeah. We don't follow the rules. Yeah. We break the rules. Breaking the law. Our hoofbeats are louder. <laughs> We do what we want. We do what we want. <laughs> <laughs> I just stare at it. It's so cute. I love it. Well, it's a good thing. It means mm-hmm. he did a good job. Yes. He did a very good job. And he has won, and there's nothing I can do to top it. And I don't know. I was pretty happy with year one. Year one? Year one. It's your paper anniversary. Oh. So I got her reams of paper. And she was like, what is this? And I was like, it's paper. It's our paper anniversary. <laughs> and then it came with an accessory, which was a typewriter. Oh. The accessory to her paper. So nice. she got this really nice typewriter because she has a problem of deleting things as she goes. Yeah. Like deleting all of her good work. Right. Because she wants to edit Second it on the go. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the idea was that if she used the typewriter, she can get it out. So that was mine. I think I'll never beat that. Nice. That was my good year. He, he wins, though. Yeah. There's... <laughs> surrender yeah because there's nothing that can be done oh yeah just watch me <laughs> <laughs> but i really love the saying our hoof beats are louder yeah i really like that so i'm like looking at it going how can i adapt this into the, a, like a tattoo that wouldn't be hard it would not there's a lot you just need do. his like image that he had and then he bought us a projector so we can um Ooh. like project pictures and images onto and the, paint onto things yeah that's cool. Because he's doing like a Pokemon series, starter series yeah. for painting. And I was doing landscapes. But there you go. Are you yeah. going to do spray paints ever? Probably. I need to replace all of my spray paints. Are so. they all old and, yeah. Yeah. and rusted and <laughs> all the buckets were full of water. Yeah. yeah. Like I need it. I need new everything to get back to spray painting. But I like spray painting because yeah. it's fast. Well, it's cool too. Yeah. The effects you can achieve, and mm-hmm. it's it's additive and subtractive in ways that exactly. are exactly. It's very tactile. Yeah, it's an extremely tactile experience, which I've also discovered. I love painting clouds, just because of the textural aspect. Yeah. Um. So that was really fun. I hate painting clouds. <laughs> I was having such a good time. <laughs> so I was like, they could be whatever I want them to be. <laughs> Look how fluffy they are. Such fluff. All of the shadows and the highlights <laughs> and the loveliness. Oh God, that's true. You could put whatever you want into a cloud, but yeah. my clouds always look stupid. I hate them. Well, we were using acrylics. Well, so I don't that use helps. acrylics. I use the internet. The internet. I do everything digitally. Yeah. Well, at least now I do. I have not figured out how to do digital art yet. It's fun. I need to like get my tablet up and running. Yeah. I used to have a tablet. Yeah. I have a surface. What am I bitching about? I could I could use the surface <laughs> if I wanted to. You just need like a good program. Yeah, there there are better programs than what I use. Like Adobe is good, but it's not really for drawing yeah. on like with a pen. I prefer if I'm using Adobe, I do everything in vector. Like I do lines that are like hard lines and thick. Yeah. I don't know. That's well, just and me. that makes sense because like when I go to draw I have such a hard time with lines in general just because A, we shake, and B, we don't have any stability. I don't know how I passed tech drawing. I did tech drawing and I passed it like within half a year. Rulers. Well, you use rulers for a lot of it, but some of it you have to freehand and you have oh, really? to do like certain uh, length or certain um, pencil like darknesses. Oh, okay. Like there's certain ones for like the border that you need, yeah. certain ones. So it was really, really strict. I don't know how I passed it. Very meticulous. I loved it. That was my favorite class ever. Interesting. But I don't think I could do it now. No. Too shaky. I get the shaky and then I get like, (laughs) there's just no stability. So you go to draw a line and it's like, yeah. (laughs) Yay, straight lines. Yeah. I don't know how Fizzy does it. Magic. (laughs) Witchcraft and wizardry. (laughs) 
Yeah, it's interesting when we talk about gaslighting because, and you just mentioned Vizzy, which is why this popped into my brain with the, uh, um, their experience at the ER. Yeah. Having the doctor just go, uh, let's get this over with because I have someone with a real problem next. Or the, you know, oh, you can move your arm that way. If Clearly you, it's not that bad. If you were in real pain, you couldn't do that. Yeah. Motherfucker. Well, and that drives me crazy. That that mode of thinking, and this is what Vizzy brought up, that I just think is so important and something that we look over all the time is the um the fact that our pain tolerance, our ability to cope, actually puts us at risk. Yeah. <laughs> Which you don't think about until you're in the ER and they're like, "Oh, you're fine." You're like, "My appendix." Like, like, yeah. People no. go in with burst appendices. Appendices. Yeah, this happened to to Steph before. Yeah. She went in for that, and she was pregnant. Oh, Jesus, that might have been when Isaiah was born. It might have been all. It was all close to each other. Oh wow! Yeah, it was a it was a whole thing, but it does it really because we go in and you know we're in intense pain. Usually, my only sign is that I'm sweating. Yeah, I get just bad pain sweats. I get shakes. Oh, that's nice. I get shakes and I get so um, you look like a flushing. crack fiend when you exactly. Go in. Like, I look like I'm withdrawing from drugs. Yeah. It's not good. It's not a good look. No. To, and then going. they're like, what are you here for? Well, I get the same thing. Because if like, I'm sweating. fluids. Yeah. If I'm sweating, then I'm going to be looking like the same thing. Yeah. It's the it's not. We just look like we're coming down. <laughs> well, and then they. A bender. <laughs> they always ask, when were you last? When was the last time you took meds? And I'm like, uh, like an hour ago <laughs> before I got here. Are you sure? Yes. I'm positive. Then why are you sweating? Um, because I'm in pain. And then they get that like, are you really? sure? <laughs> I don't think you are. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, it's so stupid. Mm-hmm. So stupid. Yeah, I actually, I actually had a nurse look at me and she goes, "What? What is your like baseline pain?" Because we were talking about like the pain scale and you know how it's like four or seven. Yeah. Essentially, she's like so. What is your like normal? Because you have EDS. So what is your like normal level? Smart question. And I was like, holy crap. <laughs> like I live around three, four normally. Yeah. She's like, okay. So it's either like there or it's bad. Right. And I was like, yep, that's exactly it. Yeah. Now that was interesting. It was a very weird experience. I wish we had more doctors that approach things that way. Right. More subjectively. Yeah. Well, and like. I don't know. I get that it's hard and that they see a lot of people throughout the day. Yeah. But I don't know. There could be more emphasis on the person. Yeah. Rather than the complaint. The dental surgeon was kind of like that. Like he got, he wanted, he started to get into EDS. He was like, oh, you have EDS. And then he's like, oh, you have heart problems. Is that because of your EDS? And he's like, yeah. So then after that, everything else that was on the list of like symptoms he ignored, he just, he wrote it all off his EDS. Yep. I was like, but that's not exactly it. <laughs> you have anxiety and depression. Yep. EDS. <laughs> well, I. <I'd... laughs> yes and no, I guess. <laughs> Por qué no los dos? Yeah, right. <laughs> Wait. No, no. Hola, soy Dora. Can you say, puedes hacerme un sandwich? That means, can you make me a sandwich in spa? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes we just meme it one another all day sorry that one really got to me he that day sent it to me in a voice <laughs> message I, I was watching it on loop and giggling harder and harder every time and i was like i gotta i gotta get this out somehow so i sent it to you and i sent it to my mom oh my god I, my what did mom, your mom say? well i don't think she reacted to me at all because i posted the actual <laughs> vine like afterwards or the tiktok uh-huh. um and she's like i watched that with my friend it was really funny it's like okay <laughs> yeah but i said it first and it was she, funny when i said it it's just like my son is an idiot and i've come to accept it yes it's fine but i didn't want to say good. that thank you <laughs> <laughs> i was avoiding that you can admit it this is a safe place <laughs> safe space you can be an idiot <laughs> <laughs> you can be an idiot. oh thank god <laughs> I'd be screwed otherwise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was harsh. I love you. <laughs> I do. Love doesn't care about IQs. 
<laughs> Rough. <laughs> I'm wondering actually um if there's if there are other like categories that get gaslit more than others. Mm. Categories like what? Mm. Well, the first big one that pops into my mind is race, right? Mm. Cuz we know that like oh my pregnancy, God. that's a big one, mm-hmm. right? Where because culturally you don't show that you are in pain yeah you are at risk because you don't show that you're (laughs) or you get ignored because it's just pregnancy pains right and you can't handle it you're just not handling your pregnancy right yeah now it's very uh medical gaslighting is a problem yeah and that's how you end up with like dead people (laughs) that's how you end up with death (laughs) we we thought they were fine Turns out that their whole their organs just fell out. I don't I don't know. That surprised me. I guess they were right this whole time. <laughs> Boy, if only someone listened to them. Yeah. Wow, what a novel idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's just interesting to me. It's interesting, but it's not. <laughs> it's it's shitty. Like, yeah. Like the bias is crap. Mm-hmm. But I'm curious about like the psychology behind it all. Yeah. It would be really interesting to see it, see that breakdown. Yeah, I get like a, such a skewed and ad, an advantageous presentation though. I show up as like a white male. Like, oh yeah, look at me, guys. <laughs> You're gonna think that I'm the shit <laughs> for no reason. For no reason, <laughs> or that I'm not doing enough. Because okay, because yeah. like we were talking about before, I I just say what's going on. I, I'm not the kind of guy who's like, oh yeah, no, it's just a little bit of pain. <laughs> I'm like, this and this and this and this. It all hurts and it sucks ass. Right. And then they're like, oh, you were a little too forthright. Right. Why did you come on with a list? You prepared this beforehand. I did because it hurts and I wanted to get everything out. I did too. I have a list that I made for my Tuesday appointment. You do though. It's how you remember (laughs) and how you you can keep up track and keep yourself on it. I used to do the same thing on my phone. I also have my medication list on there, like my present list, because it changes oh, usually yeah. from month to month. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Jeez. I'm looking forward to Tuesday, because this will be the one where we go back in and go, hey, PT doesn't know what to do with me. What now? Can we yell at general surgery again? <laughs> Can we just get somebody? Just one person, just maybe. Just kidnap them off the street. Give him a scalp. Him. Hey, you there, surgeon fine. boy. Come here, fix me. This is gonna be a running thing. Hey, you. <laughs> you there, surgeon boy. Surgeon boy, I have some some chest pains. <laughs> Would you fix them? <laughs> I've already set up the OR in the stables. In the stables. <laughs> oh my god. We have whiskey for sterilization. <laughs> you there, surgeon boy. It's covered in dirt. Somebody make this into like a comic strip. <laughs> Help me. Help me visualize this thing that's in my brain. Fizzy. Somebody help. help. <laughs> you there. Yeah. <laughs> god. Oh my god. Did you want to move on to the next subject? Sure. Because this is a good one. This is a really good one. This came from comments on the Facebook, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we got a message. We did. It was very, very pleasant. Yes. So we talked some a while back about um, hesitancy for medication and how that's kind of the thing you just have to move into. Like, yeah. you're going to need to be comfortable with it at some point. Which is funny because we avoided it. We were yes. hesitant about talking about it even. Right. Well, and it's hard because it is such a like stigmatized and taboo. Oh, my God. And it's hard to like dip your feet in when you're you feel guilty every second. Oh, yeah. Right. I still get that. Yeah. I've been on medications for years now and I still go in and I'm like nervous and on edge and yeah. like. I need more of this medication that I don't think I should be taking, but I need it to function. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's, um, I think at first it feels like defeat, right? Yeah. Like the very first thing that that comes up for me, at least, is like, 
oh, I need this because I can't deal with my body on my right, own. Exactly. And I have failed. Exactly. To yeah. whatever, whatever. I was the same way. Like, oh, I'm just weak. Yeah. Like other people could handle this. Why can't I? Right. Yeah. And I think that started with <clears throat> antidepressants. Ooh, you started there. Yeah. That was way back. I didn't do mental health until like halfway through. Uh, that was early days. Yeah. So, yeah, mental health for a little while. Got off that med because it was just making me mad. So everything that used to make me sad just made me angry. <laughs> Let's <laughs> I was like, turn this it to is rage. Not better. <laughs> Time to convert. <laughs> I was like, instead of crying, I will murder everyone. Great, wonderful. So your murder phase. Gotcha. <laughs> So we know what That's years my, uh, to look for for when um, the bodies disappear. <laughs> what, year, what year were those people missing? You don't know what year I was in my murder phase, though. The police will. They'll figure it out. They've <laughs> got figure. ways. <laughs> Do they that know? asshole sibling. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I've had a little more life experience. So. And the police, they're just infallible and they're going to get you. So... <laughs> infallible please hmm <laughs> that sounds like a really weird band name oh <laughs> punk hopefully like yes it's perfect so yeah no i started with antidepressants and that was when i was still living in with mom and dad mm. wow. and then from there i think gabapentin was next Shit. And at that point, I was just so desperate for relief that I was like, I will take whatever you give me. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that you can give me that will will help, I will try. Yeah, you hit a breaking point, basically. Yeah. Well, and that was really what it was. Because I know um, some of the comments, they talked about, like, they're doing well without meds now. But meds may be something that they look into in the future. Um, But it is. There's this, like, built-in hesitancy to it where... A, you feel like you failed or you're losing the war against your own body. Yeah. Which can be really frustrating and make you feel powerless. <clears throat> and B, when we're talking about stricter meds, there's a lot of stigma to it. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. It changes a lot of your the way you approach things or mm -hmm. have to because as soon as I was on any kind of pain medication... So like any any kind of opioid, even like tramadol for a while. Yeah. Seeing doctors and having them go over your medications list and then seeing things and then assuming instantly they make just assumptions about you and they go through your history. It's like, oh, why have you been on all these different things? What was that? I think it was your phone. Why is my phone making noise? Is Time it, to die. Was it cat? No, or I think was it, it was mine? my phone. Mine's silent. I'll have you know. Maybe your phone's it was hidden. me. Um. But yeah, uh, and, and it changes how some people will respond to you too. Yeah. You, you're going to get that in life if they, you know, I don't really vocalize what I'm on because I don't want people to know. Yeah. Because I don't want people to be like, oh, I haven't seen him in like years and now he's on opiates. He's a drug addict. Well, and then you feel like one <clears throat> mm -hmm. because you, you're going to have a physical dependency if you've been yeah. on it for any amount of time. It's just... And then you, the the one of the interesting things is getting offended when a doctor says that you have a dependency. Yeah. Because it's going to make you think that they're saying you have, you're have a drug addict. But right. really, they're saying that you have a physical... Your, your brain, body. Your brain no longer creates those chemicals because you've been taking your meds. Yes. So we're going to continue to take those and then we'll taper you. Right. Well, and then it's hard because you get into the to the realm of like withdrawal. Oh, my God. And just that word itself yeah. sounds like drug abuse right mm -hmm. like that's what is attached to that in your brain well and you have to withdraw off of anything like even get a pentan coming off of that cold turkey i tried that once and it was hell i've heard it's really bad it is like really bad i went from from 900 every three like three a day yeah to nothing and it was painful it wasn't flu like it was just headaches and body aches and oh it was i've never had to come off of it which is good but I went from 1,200 milligrams three times a day down to, I think, six, and then finally down to three. Yeah. So I've actually tapered the dose down, um, but I, it all went well because yeah, it was fine. It was kind of seamless. But yeah, I can't imagine coming off of it because there, there are days where 
And you know how you have to like find something to be grateful for in those moments of yeah, like, yeah. this is awful. <laughs> I'm going to die. This is horrible. Um, but those that. days are the days where I go, thank God for gabapentin, because if it hurts like this now, imagine without. I can't yeah. imagine what it would feel like without it. Oh, my God. No, thank you. Mm hmm. Um, which is interesting because early days when I started taking gabapentin, um, in the forums, you would see people talk about how like, oh, it kills your nerves and la la. And now being where I am in life, I'm like, that's fine. I don't need to feel things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care to feel things. <laughs> no joke. You don't care about the side effects. No, thank you. Yeah. I don't care. Well, and one thing to consider when you're starting meds is a, as a side tangent is that it doesn't have to be a permanent thing and it doesn't have to be ever increasing yeah like my dose has changed throughout the year depending on what's going on and the weather oh yeah a lot on the weather and activity versus summer yeah but the idea is that i'm i'm always trying to go lower Mm -hmm. and i don't feel pressured to it's at my place this is just a goal that i have is to always go lower because you don't want to have to be on meds all the time yeah because you can always go back up that's the other thing is that like it's okay to adjust the dose Mm mm-hmm do what you need to do. Right. And it's okay to use meds for a bit if you need like a break in order to get your physical body back in order. Yeah. Like if you're going to work towards exercising and being more active, mm-hmm. like that's what, how what um, concert has done for me is I yeah. get to be active again. Well, it's like digging yourself out of that hole. Yeah. Because we know a body in motion tends to stay in motion. Yeah. And a body at rest tends to want to die. And the longer we're at rest, the worse, the worse it, gets. it gets. Yeah. So digging yourself out of that is so hard on your own. And sometimes, yeah, you do need the supports of something. Yeah. Um, And it really helped for me to get away from that, like, weakness thinking. It's Um, hard. Yeah. But getting away from that by going meds or tools. Exactly. Really helps kind of put it in perspective. And kind of calms the hesitancy, at least for me. Yeah. because then I was like, these are things that I can pull out of my toolbox to keep fighting, Absolutely. essentially. Um, when before it would feel like I've lost because I need this right. now. Like you're you're imposing your own prejudice onto it, yeah. Instead of, of viewing it as what it is, it is a tool yeah. to get through whatever you need to get through. Exactly. Yeah. Which is why now, like, I almost don't hesitate at all. I don't know what most of my meds are called. <laughs> I have the same problem. I'm like, Jen knows oh, we're trying a new one. Cool, I'm okay with that. Well, what does it do? I don't care. Yeah, like if you you break it down, I'm on medications for my heart, my thyroid, for depression, anxiety, um, bipolar meds, which are amazing. I love my bipolar meds, and when I don't take them, I hate that I don't have them. It's one of those ones and that then it, the mania kicks in. It hurts, and, and then I get mega ma- mania. Like I can feel it coming on, and I'm like, "Oh, this is really bad." I start vibrating. Like it's time to go and do all the things. <laughs> oh God, I just gave myself that feeling even doing that. I hate it so yeah. much. Um, and then you have pain meds. We have gabapentin for nerves, and then mm-hmm. I'm on Percocet for daily pain, just functioning. Yeah. Because I'm constantly damaging things. <laughs> Like all the time, <laughs> like when he asked me what I was on the meds for, the dental surgeon, he he was like, "For your tooth?" And I was like, "No, no, for my for back, my for everything hip, else, my other hip, my my shoulders, my neck." <laughs> it's like it's kind of a big question for my everything. Yeah, for yeah. everything else. Yeah, well, and when I came up against that, because you know the resistance where people are like, "Oh," or doctors are like, "Oh, you take blah blah blah," and that was my thing with like gastro. Because they're like, well, of course you're constipated. You're taking opioids. Yeah. And I'd look at them and go, okay, but I have 14 five milligram pills over three yeah. months. Yeah, exactly. I'm not taking it enough <laughs> to have this be the you're problem. Constipated because you're having a Percocet or a Vicodin like every third day, fourth day. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> Holy what? shit. And then just recently, and this has been over the course of two and a half years ish. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because Diagno- no, three years. Three years now. Because we were diagnosed 2018. Um, and from there, it was like, it started as a rescue. And they were really, really hesitant to give it to me in the first place. And I had to just go, this is what's happened before. Because I had gone to urgent care for um, the sciatica. Mm-hmm. And they gave me like 30 and 90 for cyclobenzaprine, right? And so I, ha- I had to look at my doctor and go, 
this is how I use them and this is how I want to use them. Can we please just trial run it? Right. And he was shocked at first because like he's typing on his computer and he looks up and he goes, you make it last nine months. Because I was like, 30 pills lasts me nine months. Yeah. This is how this works. And he was like, okay, let's try 14 over three months. And after that worked and continued to work. Then we were able to go up to 24 pills every three, three months. Yeah. And then 30 every three months. As and now it's it, though, like, 30 over two months. And you've had two surgeries in the past year. Yes. Like, it's not like you're going up because you've gotten like a um, an immunity to it. Right. It's, well, there's a little bit of that. Yeah, but it's mostly that your surgeries are getting insane. Because yeah. you got to consider you went from not knowing to knowing to surgery to surgery to surgery to surgery. Yep. Like it's all ramping up at the same time. Yes. It's not just, oh, well, I've been taking these for four, four or five months. I need more. Right. Well, and then throw in a move. Yeah, exactly. And then the deck and then the garden box and then the... <laughs> Were you, when you approached it, like how, how hard was that conversation? Cause I, I, I freeze up at, at those points. I'm always like, uh, so meds, uh, yeah, I don't like when usually it's the th last thing I say Yeah, at the appointment. So we go through the appointment and then I go, Hey, this is what I've done in the past. Can we try this? Yeah. That's what I do too. Um, Yeah. So I, I'm just saying it's a hard conversation. It was a really hard conversation, but there was definitely a moment and I'm like remembering this very clearly right now. There was definitely that moment where I was watching him type and he was not at all engaged in what I was saying. And then as soon as I was like, I can make 30 pills last me nine months. Then he got his attention. Then I caught his attention. Yeah. And I was like, OK, I need to just drive forward with that. Right. <laughs> and then from there, I realized I, I learned really quickly that it was a matter of building that trust. And See, I, I always had it offered to me like I've never had to ask except for maybe once. And that was when I started at the new place when yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to go to New Health. And, you know, that was just normal, though, because there's a pain management clinic. Like, what were you on while I was on this? Yeah. Can I get this? Um, but before that, I, I would just wait until it got so bad that I would be sitting in the doctor's office and physically like dying yeah they could tell they're like you're sweating you're you're melting you're not on meds your blood pressure is terrible oh my yeah. god it was so bad and then they'd be like you should try and so i was just wondering what that conversation would would seem like because even when it's when when they were like you should take it i was hesitant i was like mm, yeah i don't know well because there's always that fear of because it's it's so taboo and it's so hyped up in culture mm -hmm. as this super addictive thing well we have the opioid war going on right so yeah the war yeah the war on drugs the whole thing that it seems like my husband had a really hard time with me getting on pain meds because mm -hmm. he was terrified that i'd be addicted um and that it was going to lead down this horrible road same <laughs> where and i didn't necessarily have that fear because i kind of learned early on that my adhd brain is that's just how it works is yeah. i'm like one thing to the next i <laughs> i don't think i could get addicted to something if i wanted to um well i don't think we have it in families either it's yeah it's a genetic thing component right. too and we I don't think we have that the addiction piece yeah yeah so it was it's always easy for me to stop and then forget that i even have them until i need them exactly which is really great <laughs> And then when I need them, I turn into the heroin dragon and that's a whole other different story <laughs> yeah. where I'm like, I'm not taking them. No, it I have to get worse. Yeah. What if it gets worse than this? And then I'm going to sit there and go, what if it gets worse than this? Yeah, yeah no, it's. <laughs> and then I never take them. And then I'm sad. <laughs> but I, in a way, it's comforting to know you have them, though. Yes. Even when you're being a heroin dragon, you you know in your head you have that option. Yeah. But if the worst part for me is scarcity. Yeah. The scarcity is what like triggers the panicky part of my brain yeah even if i know like logically i can make it last until refill i know i can but it's that like scarcity part of my brain that's like oh you better take it now because otherwise you won't have any to take yeah no i don't I, know why that is but well you get that that fear of the pain because you don't have your your cushion anymore you don't have your yeah like the it's it's like a safety net yeah, yeah. exactly You're like if it gets too bad then i can bail out by taking this pill yeah which is really kind of how i use it because i'm like this is gonna suck 
let's preempt it. Right. Or really when it comes down to like, I need a break from coping. And that for me is a really big one is that like, I've been at this for so long and I am so tired and I hurt and I need to rest and I can't rest because I hurt. Right. When you don't have it in you to cope with the pain anymore. Yeah. Then... You're like, I just need a break and a reset. Yeah. Which is what I used to use it for was I could take the Percocet and Cyclobenzaprine together, mm-hmm. sleep it, sleep on it, and then wake up and be fine. Right. You'd, you'd get your break. Yeah. It and was like a, just a hitting a quick reset button. Yep. It was good stuff when it worked that way. <laughs> <laughs> not quite so much anymore. No. A little bit less. But it's it's not horrible yet. Yeah. Like, I've seen the the high end, and it, my high end wasn't even that high. Right. To me, it felt like I was in just swimming in fucking drugs. But the doctors are like, no, you're fine. You're not. <laughs> That's not even a lot. No, like, you're, you're nowhere near the 80s every couple hours. And I'm like, oh, shit. Jesus. I was on, I think, 40... <clears throat> 40 milligram Percocets and oh, then. That's a lot. Yeah. Not 40 themselves. It was 40 a day. So it was oh, ten, okay, okay. tens for a day. And then it was extended release. But the extended release was equivalent to another 10 an hour mm-hmm. or something like that. So it was like basically 20, 20 what milligrams. Is that the Exampsa? Is that what that yeah, was? Yeah, Exampsa. Exampsa. It's just an oxycodone. Yeah. Oxycontin. Oxycontin. Um, and it was it you know it sucked <laughs> it was horrible i was super depressed and i was in like a fucking fugue state all the or fugue state the yeah. whole time well i can't imagine trying to work through that brain fog the it drugged up release. brain frog it frog, frog. <laughs> <laughs> who is tax frog <laughs> who is brain frog and why can't i think about him <laughs> <laughs> the brain frog <laughs> <laughs> but it it was it was and I knew it was too much, but they're, they're, anytime I would bring it up, they would just be like, you need more. Right. Like, I'm not asking when for more. They were like, oh, you're depressed? Take more drugs. You're depressed? You just had surgery? You had back surgery? Take more. Like, that's not going to help me, guys. Yeah. I knew it was too much. And then I went without. I went. Uh, that was the breaking point. that we, We've talked about before. We're just like, fuck it. I'm done. I'm not taking anything. I am finished. I'm just going to suffer. <laughs> yeah. I hate myself. I hate everything. It's over. No more meds. It's not real. I'm going to I'm bed. going off everything cold turkey. I did that. And it was. And you whoo. tried to die. I did. It was really bad. It was a horrible decision to make. Yeah, that was that was the second time that I had. That was really bad frustration really time. Really bad. Was, was, yeah, I've had two like bad suicidal events where I actually attempted suicide twice. And the second one was because of the, the cutting all the meds because I was just done. Yeah. I was so frustrated. Well, and that's how I felt like with the PTs. Mm-hmm. Like that for me, I'm like, this is just dumb. It's so frustrating. Nothing is helping. Nobody can help me. There's no point. I'm just crazy. Like, <laughs> it's time to burn it all to the ground because no one is helping me. Yeah. Which is just frustrating. So I guess the main takeaway then is just to look at your meds as a tool and yes. use them as a tool and not use them as um like a crutch or a fallback. Yeah. Well not like Well Yeah, you, the word. There's a word there. Yeah. You don't want to use it as like your your primary. Exactly. Yeah. Like I I I'm kind of No, I'm not there. I was there, I guess. Where it was, everything was built around the pain meds, mm. I guess is the way to look at it. But now it's more everything else and pain meds when I need. Yeah. You know? Right. Which is nice. Well, and now we kind of have a better tiered system, I think, as we've like learned over the years. Yeah. Um, Take that. And we have other tools at our disposal that we've discovered. Yeah, so like the TENS machine is a great one. Or the um, Apothecana mm-hmm. is a great one. Or a hot bath or a hot shower or I used to whatever, whatever, hot baths. whatever. Right. There was times I would take three or four a day just to like get through the day. Uh-huh. And the, and I was on the crazy meds at that same time. Oh, God. I think it was just me trying to fight like the buzzing feeling you mm-hmm. get when you take too many. Like, you know what I'm talking about. You get yeah. that like weird sensation when you've had yeah. too many drugs. Or like, it's like ugh. a tingle. Yeah. But it's like a staticky tingle. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just going to over sense that with heat. Yeah. Not fun. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think we've definitely built other structures. And coping skills. Yeah. Like, there is so much more now than we had before. Yeah. Well, and it helps 
I think both of us tremendously to know that we're not alone with what we're going through. Yeah. Um, and that just on its own takes care of a lot of the like surrounding anxiety. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> Cause I can't imagine doing this <laughs> on my own. Oh my God. <laughs> well, think back to when we didn't know and we weren't talking. Yeah. And it was just, you know, we were both just high dying masculine. all the time. <laughs> yeah. Don't you, nothing's wrong with you. Everything's in your head. You're crazy. Yep. But you're in crazy amounts of pain. Yeah. And you're just like, why can't I do this? Why can't I function like a normal person? What's wrong with me? Why am I so weak? I had that moment on the fourth. I felt really bad because I was just, we were fucked up. Oh, dude. That's why I was playing magic because I was trying to distract oh, myself. so bad. I was like, I can't. And then I almost bailed halfway through like every like, every couple of minutes. I was like, I'm going to go to bed. Yeah. I'm well, and I bed. was over there like. Yeah, I was no. gone. It, it, like I had left my body. <laughs> we had so much going on. You had especially had like a ramp yeah. up of activities. Well, because I had like morning stuff, then our stuff, and then there was more afterwards. Yeah. But Randy took me home because I was like, I'm done. Yeah. I cannot anymore. And then I just felt really awful like yeah. the whole night because I was frustrated that I didn't pick on, up on like the social cues oh when I was God. here. Yeah. Um. Because I was in pain and I didn't feel good and I missed all of the cues and that's as, usually my job to take care of and I felt shitty. As an okay though, as an aside, Benji did spend the rest of the time after that with Papa. Good. So yeah. him and Star made up for it. Good. Yeah, because that was my big thing and I was just like, I just. I think he understands. Sad I even explained that, I that do things. both you and I were having a bad time. Yeah. Like it was, <laughs> it was clear. Yeah. And he, I mean, if anyone's gonna understand it, it's him. Well, and I knew I knew he would be okay, but like I, I felt like oh, I was I letting him down, and I felt like I was letting my other family down because I couldn't go in the evening. Yeah, and I just stayed. I stayed home with the dogs, <laughs> and everybody went and had a great time. And I was like, I am a piece of shit. Well, as long as they're not upset at you, no, like, and they weren't, and I knew they weren't. Like most of the feelings are probably just they felt bad that you were getting left out. Yeah, but it's not what you wanted at the time, so right. it's not like you're getting left out. You're getting rest. <laughs> But it was hard. It was one of oh, those yeah. like, why can't I do what normal people do? She wants to be where Fuck the this. people are. <laughs> I need to crack my back so bad. I'm I having, keep trying. Like, massive muscle spasms. I keep doing right this, here. and I'm like, just stop, just go. Do you think no. it's break time? I know it's break time because I know when we started. Good. Let's take a break. Let's let's All everybody right. take a break. We'll <laughs> Even see though, and in a little bit, go get some water and some sunlight. Yes, do those things and a snack because you deserve it. Do you though? You do. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I'm looking at myself. Get I, something tasty. I'm directly connecting with myself when I'm editing. Okay. Don't eat a snack. You <laughs> don't deserve it. Get to work. <laughs> You're halfway there. <laughs> okay, oh no, no. We'll see ya. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a snack. Welcome back. <laughs> we definitely didn't return unaware. Again. <laughs> I don't wait until she's not paying attention. Are you kidding? That'd be mean. Every time. <laughs> we're not siblings. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but we're back. We are back. I hope you did some self-care. Yes. Hopefully. <clears throat> we did. Yeah. I got sunlight and water. Sunlight and not water for me. <laughs> But sunlight. But sunlight. I got sunlight. Yeah. It was good. <clears throat> and we have something we want to talk about. Yes. So in the Facebook groups, I discovered this um, kind of amazing little nonprofit run by one of the member's daughters. Um, it's called Sophia's Helping Hand. And they are a 501c3 nonprofit. And she sends birthday cards and care packages to kids in the hospital. That's which is so good. Absolutely amazing. So go check them out. Sophia's Helping Hand. Do they have a website? Um, I'm not sure if it's a website or if it is. It's a link. It's linked on Facebook. So I think they've got a Facebook page. Okay. Um, and it's S O F I A Sophia. Good. Yeah. Sophia's Helping Hand. That's cool. So check them out. God. Could you imagine being hospitalized and EDS at a kid's age? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I had a student once who um, 
I was diagnosed super young. I think she was like between three and five. Um, had a prolapse early, early on. Yeah. So we know what happens. <laughs> no joke. Yeah. So <clears throat> just cool things. Getting people connected to the right things. Yeah. Which is great. Um, let's see. Where did we leave off? We were talking. Oh, we need to talk appropriate time to start medication. Ah, like, what yes. are the signs? Yep. And when it when is good? When to start considering it? Um, I think even before you start considering it, I think it needs to be a conversation that you are having with your doctor. Yeah. Um, with your medical team, talking about the coping skills that you do have. See if they offer um, like behavioral health options. Mm-hmm. A lot of places do, um, and a lot of places cover it. You can have up to like 10 sessions sometimes. Really? Because yeah. for me, it was a struggle to find that combo. But Really? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm on a different medication or Medicaid. Yeah. Like, it's just fun. Medicaid to... is so hard to get connected with the right people, yeah. though. Oh, it's Like we've awful. talked about before, building a team is insanely hard. Oh, God. But yeah, you definitely want to connect your mental health to it. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And definitely, if you could start a conversation, would be fantastic. Yeah. Then you can ease your way in. Everybody is is aware that you're not just pill hunting or yeah well and i think it it helps your doctor and yourself be on the same page as far as how your pain's going um keeping track of everything um thinking about what side effects you may or may not experience Mm -hmm. um like we've talked about before see if you can find someone to be accountable to if you do decide that it's time um because having an outside perspective to kind of watch to make sure the side effects aren't crazy can be really helpful <laughs> god i wish i had that when we started like because i was just always self self-conscious and self-aware all the time yeah like i just assumed i looked like the worst person in the world <laughs> I, I wasn't yeah but <laughs> yeah no i get that yeah there were times i've had to look at my husband and go hey i'm gonna start a new med it could do this this or this could you just mm-hmm. like keep an eye out and let me know that's the other thing talking to your like significant other yeah have that be a conversation so everyone's in the loop yeah Well, and that's the big thing is communication is going to be huge when you decide that maybe it's time. Maybe it's time for some more tools in your toolbox. Yeah. Um, And again, thinking about it as tools in your toolbox is really going to help you to process the need for medication. Yeah, if you're feeling hesitant, changing the the, the outlook or the The narrative to it. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. That would be my biggest like first step. Right. If you if you feel like you're at a point where you need it and you're looking at it as a tool, then then it's a good time to have the conversations that need to be said. Yeah. Well, and I think when we talk about, like, when is a good time to start considering it? It's tough for me. Because we are really bad at self-preservation. Generally, we wait until things are not functional Yeah. to bring it up or say, <laughs> like, hey, I need help because I'm not functioning. Yeah, we've only really been good about stuff since the podcast. Yes. I'd like, say. preemptively. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you guys make us more accountable. So thank you. Very, very much so. Yes. Um, but I think quality of life is going to be a big factor. Yeah. So if you're gritting your teeth and white knuckling through, it might be time to consider some other tools. That's, that was where I was at. Yeah. Where it was visible. Yeah. Even if you can function through it. You don't have to. Right. And that's really, that was like the big mind blown piece for me was like, I can, I'm capable of, yeah. therefore I don't need help was always the thinking. Um, even after surgeries, I was like, I can get around and I oh, can yeah. open doors for myself. So why bother asking for help? I'm going to bother other people. Um, but yeah, if you're, <laughs> if your quality of life is not, if it's not quality right <laughs> it's time for tools and that doesn't mean that the that meds have to be the next go-to tool no exactly like you can pick something else up you can try other things you can <clears throat> um what was it physical physical therapy yeah yeah um that could be really good handy yeah well and just movement in general yeah the more we're up and moving the better we are and that's it's the sucks, way it is but it's good yeah it's very paradoxical yeah but the more you can be active the better you're going to feel for a longer period of time um for me that means that i work with a personal trainer through vasa fitness so it's about 
160 every month ish. Mm-hmm. Um, but she and I have been working together for about two and a half years, pretty close actually to when I started with Kaiser. Nice. Um, so she is definitely a valuable part of my team at this point. I consider her to be a valuable part of my team and somebody who has helped me maintain mobility. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually improved Huge. mobility, yeah. I think. Like she teaches stability. me stability. Yeah, exactly. And helps me to build the muscles that I need in order to be stable. Yep. Instead um, of cheating. Yeah. <laughs> Cause we do, we cheat a lot. Unintentionally. We Your body do... adjusts. Exactly. Your body compensates. So learning how to move is important. Huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still yeah. have to go through and do all that. I've just been more active, which has been fantastic. Yeah. Not being in bed. Not. I noticed this the other day. I actually planned my days ahead, which is something I didn't do before. Really? Yeah. Like, I'm like, um, tomorrow, what should I do? What What can I get done? Which is so bizarre. That's awesome. Because before then, it was just, don't know if I'll be able to do anything. Yeah. Don't know if I'll function. Don't know if I am alive. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm hitting a point where I think the ADHD symptoms are a little out of hand and I'm like I think I need to stop using cannabis for a little while and see if I can get back on a med for that yeah and see what we can do because my executive functioning is garbage yeah, it's fair. I can't bring myself to make like appointments <laughs> so I'm like that takes a phone call that I don't feel like doing right now so I wonder and if, then I never do it because I forget it exists if I only have high functioning like my, my high executive functioning is perfectly fine because of how manic I get. Yeah. Like the bipolar just offsets it. So I've never had problems like planning things out and keeping things in order. But I've also had to obsessively do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like not OCD levels, but definitely like I, I prefer things to be in order. Otherwise I get manic. <laughs> that's how that's kind of how Randy is actually. Yeah. Like he I don't know how he does it. His executive functioning works way better than mine. Um, but he also knew he was ADHD from a much younger age. Right. And so he's picked up more tools in his toolbox. So for me, I'm like just discovering the world of ADHD. Yeah, same. <laughs> I'm only now like actually working on, I, I, I haven't accepted it. Like I'm, I'm neuro adjacent. Right. <laughs> I don't have ADHD. I'm just neuro <laughs> Neuro adjacent. <laughs> Neurodivergent, neuro adjacent. Yeah. You know, don't get it twisted. <laughs> Yeah, there, there are just some things where I'm like, is that EDS or is it because I have ADHD? Yeah. <laughs> what part is what part? So maybe it's time to address that piece. Yeah. And I mean, and that's really the process for us to like try well, new Well, think meds. of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's you're, like. You're going to change your, your lifestyle a, a bit to, to try out a medication. Yep. And yeah, like you said, it, it doesn't have to be a permanent thing. Like, right. It's a trial. Yeah. See if it helps. And if it doesn't help, you can go back. Well, and here's the other thing. And this is one that. I didn't realize was so hard for people, but I know it is because my husband's gone through it where he'll try a med, it doesn't work, and then he gives up. Gives up, up, yeah. Yeah. But hey, you're allowed to say, I don't like this one. Can we try something different? Yep. it's That's allowed and encouraged. Explicit communication. Exactly. So don't don't be afraid to med shop while you're at it. (laughs) (laughs) But with your doctor, it shouldn't be bad if you're... the conversation should, if if you're if you're with a good doctor, be how is it going? And if you're like the medication isn't working or I'm getting sick, which happens to me a lot. Oh or I my don't God. like the side effects. Yeah, yeah, I get major side effects on every medication. Um, then they should, in theory, go well. Let's try this, or yep. maybe we do this. It doesn't have to be a medication either. It can be yeah. trying or like let's add something. Yeah. to balance it out, or let's lower the dose, or, or- wait. Yeah, you might exactly. Hear, Wait give it two more, more time. weeks and then let's check in again. Yeah. It might be frustrating, but yeah. it is worth it to sit through it. Yeah. To at least cross it off is huge. Yeah. Well, and as much as we want the world to work the way we would like it to, it doesn't. Yeah. And going through the process is important. And it's one of the steps that you just can't skip. We need to do a whole episode on the process. Yeah. And stomaching the process. The stomaching the process and playing the game yeah. and appeasing people and yeah. It's a whole shebang and it's frustrating. And I get that like there are people who just do not want to do that. And I get it because we shouldn't have to do that. But the world we live in is this way Mm -hmm. and we don't really have a choice. Right. It's So until we can change those ingrained systems, (laughs) 
we got to play the game. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Work your way up from I have a shoulder pain to, oh, I have an actual chronic invisible illness. Yep. That's a, a big step. It shouldn't be. But it is. That journey took fucking five years. Yeah. And that, then there was the eight years before that where we were just insane. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll do yeah. an episode on that. Well, it's funny. I was actually... So my husband's grandparents were over yesterday while we were at the parents' house. Yeah. Um, and his grandmother actually asked me about EDS as a whole. So That's nice. that was really interesting to get to like sit down and explain it to her. And she's like... You are always so good humored about everything. And like, I laugh because if I don't, I'm going to cry. <laughs> so <laughs> everything is funny and that's the way it is. Yep. Yeah. But it was interesting. It's always, it's always a, like a boost when someone wants to know more. Yeah. It's exciting. That, yeah, that is fulfilling for me. Yeah. <laughs> to be like, hey, you give a shit. Or hearing, like, sometimes I like hearing from other people that, it's like the validation just yeah. hearing it that someone knows what it is and that they can sympathize with you yeah that's nice oh i have massage next week <sighs> this coming week actually <laughs> rip, on wednesday rip up all the tissue well i was thinking about um the validation attack that i had oh, last yeah. time <laughs> his i believe you and i can feel it and i was like thank you yeah this is real Who it's happening you? <laughs> you, you definitely have these things yeah I see other people all the time that are normal. You are not normal. Yep. And then I see my PCP on Tuesday, mm -hmm. which is good. So we'll get all of that done, figured out. Um. Yeah, I think sports is really the only piece we haven't like delved yeah. into, because that is complicated. It is. Because there are certain things that we just should not do. Yeah, I know the recommended list of things to not do yeah like running and the entire list of things that you're not supposed to do or i did as a kid up until i was in my like mid-20s yeah. so yep <sighs> um swimming is good and low impact yeah that's a good i love swimming that, that works out but we just don't have water around here <laughs> yeah to get back into a pool right yeah swimming's a good one um we were talking about this about little one um Martial arts yes. would be where I would be body control. my kiddos. Um, just because, again, that body control is huge. Yep. So knowing how to move and having that strong base is important. Um, I don't know. What other sports? Let's see. Like, <laughs> you're not supposed to do football for sure. High impact uh, is yeah. very bad. Basketball can be high impact and is, is Running. frowned upon. Yep. Hockey, you shouldn't get into fights. So you shouldn't join hockey unless you're willing to fight. Um, Baseball, you're going to ruin your elbows. Yeah. And you have to run. Your shoulder. Burst run. Yeah, don't do that. So there goes your hips and legs. <laughs> <laughs> sports is complicated. You can do sports, though. Like, it can't be done. That's just yeah. the, the list of things that you're not don't supposed recommend. to do. Yeah. It's like when they, they tell us, like, you can't play wind instruments. I hate that because I played in wind yeah. instruments and I played I played I played one that had, took the most lung capacity. I didn't even know that collapsing our lungs was like a thing. Yeah, happens to Autumn. Oh really? Yeah, she she's collapsed both lungs or at least oh, the same lung more than one time. Because it just doesn't come back and inflate. Right. It's weird. And so she had to go to the hospital and deal with all that. Fun. Yeah. Great. It's exciting. That's when she thought she was more fancy. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, no, there, there's a big list of things that we shouldn't do. But <laughs> if you've been watching this podcast, you know that can and should are two different things. Yes. And oftentimes we choose can. Oftentimes. Um, I think every time we will choose can. Yes. To so, fight. Unless someone else is limiting me. Oh, rock climbing can be good, too. Oh, rock climbing sounds fun. Yeah. I it's would rough on that. the wrists, but it's like I have good strength wrists. building. Yeah. Like, which is good good rock for the climbing core. Is good one. yeah swimming rock climbing martial arts all good stuff yeah i would not do like boxing just because that's really high impact yeah well that's the thing <laughs> having eds makes you almost really good at a lot of these things yeah so it's well especially like so swimming and diving I'm great at diving yeah <laughs> kept dislocating my shoulder when i would put it up but sailing's probably on the no-no list yeah but i don't care see I don't care. Yeah. 
We need to get the boats out this year. Yes. Well, I need to get a hitch on my... Well, we need to find a laser trailer. Yeah. Because we don't have a laser trailer, and that's a problem. I could probably find one. I'm pretty cool. I don't know if you guys know this, I'll but... I'll build one. <laughs> you, you, it's not street legal. You build one, <laughs> and I'll use my, my appeal and people's pleasant memories of me to, to guilt them into letting me have a laser trailer for a weekend. Yes. Or just Perfect. ask Bapa to ask somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Find uh, Becca. Let's go. I need need a boat i that would be too awkward couldn't do it that's what i did when we were up there when we first got engaged we were in grand lake yeah um which is also part of why this means yeah the, wood the especially. world i'm so <laughs> lost it's too sweet i can't handle it um yeah no i found becca at like the black bear inn or whatever the heck and was like hey i need a boat and she's like here's the keys <laughs> Uh, friends. Yes. To have them again. <laughs> what are friends? I have friends still, kind of, sort of. You have more friends than I do, like do actively. I? I have two, three. Adam. Yeah, I have three. Three. The three people that I talk to constantly yep. and that Kaylee had to alert Autumn to the fact <laughs> that <laughs> they're one of the three people that I talk to. <laughs> Feel special. Yeah, be be special, er. Be special, er. Like you're pretty pretty awesome already, but you're on a list of uh, only three people. <laughs> you're so on <laughs> you're on the list, pretty much. Fabulous. <laughs> um. Yeah. What else were we gonna try to hit? Well, sports was a big one. Yeah, but we don't know enough about sports. Well, and that's the thing is that like I was active in my t- youth. And then at about 16, that's when symptoms got really bad and I had to stop basically everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, working out, you can still do. Be careful when you do it. Yeah, if you can get um, a trainer. Or even just somebody who can teach you how to move correctly. There are there are trainers. <clears throat> there are EDS oh, really? trainers. I'm pretty sure that there, there are some. I know that there's at least one in Colorado. That is a PT that specializes in helping people with EDS. Interesting. Okay. And they, they're up north. But it seems like one of those things that you could get in, at least learn the basic movements. Yes. And then build on that. Yeah. Because that's the thing. Like, I know I have not had good luck with PT, but I've also been proactive yeah. about things. Um, and so usually PT is like, if you're doing all the right stuff, I don't know what to do with you. Um, but I know that, like, if you're just starting your journey to try to be more active um and like build that fitness and that muscle um pt could be really beneficial in showing you how to move and how not to move and what muscles to activate but yeah and i know it's not an option for everybody but if you pick something up just make sure you're careful about it try to avoid yoga <laughs> well yeah yeah <laughs> it's not great but it's great i've heard okay things about pilates yeah but I've heard no, no for yoga. Well, yeah, because we of can those always things. we can already do all the positions exactly. anyway. So it's you go in and you're like, I can do yoga. Like I did it with Kaylee. I'm for a really bit. good at yoga. It's like watch, watch what I can do. I can already do all these positions, yeah. and then you do bad things to yourself. Right. Well, and there's not a lot of benefit no. because you can already do all the positions. Right. <laughs> without having to work for it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yoga is not super beneficial. <laughs> That's the thing. There's no effort in it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I did yoga once as like a cool down activity. And he was like, oh, wow. Have you been doing this a lot? And I was like, I've never done yoga before. <laughs> What's yoga? I'm just bendy. Trendy bendy. Trendy as bendy. They say on the comedy cab. Mars? No. Um, <laughs> uh, Devin, the guy who does the taxi, the Uber. Funny Uber rides. Oh, okay. He was... He had a hashtag going for a while because he found out he had a bendy thumb, like super bendy. And <laughs> they got the hashtag trendy bendy going. Yeah. No, mine. I, I just, <laughs> don't I do still it. Win. I still win. I don't know what I did. There we go. No, because no. it was bent in and out. <laughs> it's more like. It was like a weird. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it just looks in so out. absurd. <laughs> there. <laughs> it's just absurd is what it is. The claw. The claw. I'm amusing myself. But my thumb's gonna hurt, so it's fine. Way to go, champ. <laughs> you did Stellar. it. Stellar. 
Congratulations. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, Jeffrey. <laughs> we want to end on comments, I think. Yes. So I'm trying to see. And we still have plenty of time, but. Yeah. Well, I was looking to see if we had <clears throat> like other stuff going on. We might. We had a comment about not going to A and E. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Europeans. Good to see ya. See ya. Uh... Well, I didn't see Crystal's comments on on the thing. Oh, what'd she say? Uh, it was from two weeks ago. Stuff I didn't notice. And today is my floor day. Hashtag build a ladder. Yes. Hashtag build, build a ladder. I've had floor days. That's been me this week, just because I've been so potsy. Yeah. Like yesterday everything was just stumbling into wherever so you just pick a direction and go yeah, yeah, and like, you hope to god you don't fall you really just <laughs> fling your body <laughs> you get that momentum and then you move that direction and yep. hope that you don't fall You're over like, hopefully we make it to wherever we're going <laughs> yeah i have plenty of floor days there are days when i'm just i live on the floor yes <laughs> that is my existence i will forever be floor Floor. I am floor. I am floor. I see baby spider. You see, you see baby <laughs> no, I mean, oh, okay. I was like, where time. is he? No, we, we had a tiny itty bitty baby spider. Yeah, he was he was micro. And we were just watching him crawl around the carpet. We like lost lunatics. him in the fibers. It was a sad day. <laughs> oh, man. This poor girl, she's going through, she's in the hospital for gastroparesis, and they're getting ready to fit her with a tube. <sighs> see, that's 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 the destination i'm pretty sure and i don't i yeah. don't wanna no no yeah. like one day we'll get there i'm not, uh, not happy about it yeah it might it might not happen but i feel like i'm on track because it's been getting worse the like every time i i've been drinking the starbucks I always, always can't swallow it. Oh, it always yeah. sits there. And it's either a combination of gastroparesis or just GERD, which is all well, kind of connected. Like dysphagia is what yeah. it's called when you can't swallow. The And that can be um dysautonomic. That that's what I was thinking of, dysautonomia. Yeah. But yeah. Can be dysautonomic, um, or with like the neuropathies. And it's Fun. the neuropathies that just like that's why you have dead ilius. <laughs> yeah, I have neuropathic. I have parts of my intestines that just don't work. Yeah. Who cares? Well, and I wonder if I'm like in that same loop because that's where we're at. Yeah. Where I'm like, yeah. They're like, diarrhea? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, constipation? Yes. They're like, how? And I'm like, we (laughs) skip three days, clear everything out, and then skip three days again. My life is a cleanse. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not doing it on purpose, though, and it's annoying. (laughs) Oh my god. <laughs> You're like, I live in the bathroom for a couple of days and then we go back to skipping three and then, then we forget about the bathroom. <laughs> then we do it again. Yeah. Again and again and again. Over and over. Forever. Are there actual coffees in there? No. I didn't get coffees this week. <sighs> Evil box. I need to go to Sam's Club. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Sick of your lies. What is man but a miserable pile of secrets? <laughs> <laughs> what is the truth but a lie agreed upon? Are we just gonna quote at each other? Yeah, that's <laughs> like gotta keep. Not all who wander are lost. <laughs> just not even <laughs> stuff that matters. <laughs> what was it I said earlier? Oh, oh food for thought <laughs> requires a mind with teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and let the memory begin. No. What was it we were we were editing the last time and the whole first half is just us memeing at each other (laughs) yeah the first 40 minutes of the recording that before we even started yep we were just sitting there and doing memes (laughs) that's how we warm up that's our (laughs) are you are you ready that's why she's always giggling and i'm always giggling when we start because she always waits (laughs) she doesn't know it but she always picks when i'm not ready he's gotta look happy (laughs) and then surprised surprised at being happy <laughs> that's more it i think it's <laughs> oh they caught me i am dark busted. and moody and sullen brood. you don't know about my dark and brooding past okay <laughs> brood <laughs> my terrible dark and brooding past what is that scene from angel where uh spike's making fun of him oh god i don't know he's talking about his like <laughs> 
quickly to the angel mobile away yeah Anytime I think of that, I just think of Cordelia saying, what's your childhood trauma? Yeah. Because that was my email for a long time. I love that. <laughs> childhood trauma. What's AOL. your childhood com. trauma? It turned out to be a little too pointed in our adulthood, though. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> what's your childhood trauma? Well, you see. <laughs> Pick one. Let's get into it. Make yourself cozy. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All upbeat and smiles. <laughs> It's because we're thinking about the end again. And TikTok. <laughs> Speaking of TikTok, I wanted to see how we're doing. Well, yes. We posted a couple new ones. So good ones. We had like a really shitty week and a half and we didn't do anything. Yeah, we were posting like every every day I was yeah. getting up and doing two. And then we just, it was not good times for a while. Holiday. Holiday happened. And like I said before, if we don't post for a week, like you're missing you know. something. You know why. <laughs> you know why. We shouldn't have to say it, but <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, by the way, our open letter is now out and available. So oh, yeah. if you've not seen that one yet, go check it out. Let us know how we did. We hope we covered. At some basics. point, I want to refine it and do just an uh, open yeah. letter, like a like we did with Ren and do like a Wednesday, yeah, like a bonus episode kind of thing. Yeah. So like, go through it. Put what, it. What like, do you organize want? it? Add more things to it. Yeah. We need more experiences, really. What do we need our people to know? Exactly. Because my people and her people learned the long way. Yes, the hard way. And there are people <laughs> that get diagnosed and haven't had to fight it. And it's kind of a shock. And then the people in their lives need to know. So yeah, give us your input. Yes. Or don't. <laughs> or don't. You have two options. Take it or leave it. <laughs> I can't see it. We I think we hit 25 like we're at 26 right on yeah tiktok not bad she's pretty good i'm also getting better at tagging because i realized that i <laughs> uploaded the last two and they bombed oops because i i didn't, didn't tag, them. tag them i tagged them a tiny bit but <laughs> i wanted to see what would happen I'm like just tag tag the hell out of it well get them out there yeah the, i don't think it makes sense to people though because we tag it with like chronic I know. Illness or invisible <laughs> illness and it's like just, just go us. watch the podcast you'll figure it out i need to put that like on there yeah. somehow aren't we linked we yeah we are YouTube but like when you're just link. cycling through we don't mention it oh yeah you know what i mean like if it just pops up on somebody we'll have to do like an intro yeah uh, that or went something. so well last time <laughs> if you guys have seen our uh oh, what no. is fantastic pains we got some really good tiktoks out of that because it was just pandemonium we did four or five takes on that one it was absolutely insane and it we just laughed great. the whole time. Because we're very serious people. And when, <laughs> not that we don't take this seriously, but. It's hard to like sit down and be like, okay, we have to do a thing. Yep. Whereas the rest of the time we're just hanging out and having a conversation. Yeah. Shooting the shit. <laughs> I think that's the way people enjoy it. Yeah. At least I hope so. Yeah. They don't actually. <laughs> <laughs> they watch it. Nobody to, likes this. This is torture. <laughs> They use it as torture in other countries. I was just thinking yep. the same thing. I was that's, like, that's what all the views are. <laughs> again. I'm going to make you watch this seven negative times. Negative self-talk. <laughs> you got to be better about that. People enjoy it. They do. I, I don't believe it. My brain is just... <laughs> I working, enjoy it. That's... Work in circles. <laughs> that's all. I yeah. We enjoy it. You enjoy it. <laughs> We're off topic. I'm having a good time. He's having a good time. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Unless it's like last week or the week before. When yeah, we, had we were a like, we're not having a good time. I was, dude. I just love the part where I'm like laying in here and I'm like, <laughs> I don't feel good. I'm surprised I, like I didn't look like I was dying couch. more because I felt so shitty. Yeah, I could tell. Oh. You just were not, not no. in a good place. I was not about it. Yeah. Like I was, I was happy to be there and doing it, but I just, yeah. I'm like, my brain was killing me. My neck was killing me. My back was on fire. Yeah. Oh my god! And then the weather, mm -hmm. where it's like it's gonna storm. And then we did the fourth. for twelve minutes, and yeah. then it's gonna clear up, and then it's gonna storm again. It'll be a heavy storm though. It's like some yeah. we've been getting those heavy monsoons, yeah, which is kind of nice with the lightning. I'm okay with it as long as it like comes in slow and leaves slow. It's the like snapbacks that I, I get like pressure yeah. whiplash, <laughs> barometric whiplash. It's true though. <laughs> like when when I sit in that living room and I just watch the green, like yeah. we have a, a fluid 
barometer. And well, that's why like I hate flying. Oh yeah, flying just hurts. I oh. never really realized that until later that I I liked flying, but it was very uncomfortable. Yeah, and like I didn't realize it was going the up and then coming down. I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. And then we get down, and I'm like, okay, we're... <laughs> <All> okay, <good. laughs> it's not that we, anymore. We lived. <laughs> yeah, I have survived. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Are there any other comments or anything? <clears throat> um any points? No, so we had we had our open letter. We had that one message that was pretty direct, which was great, and they were the ones who told us to uh talk about the sports and the activity. Yeah. Um and I wish we had more to say. Hesitancy on meds, which is great. Because I think that's it's a great topic when you're talking about long-term conditions um yeah i think it's also important that we mention that like meds are not the only road to take right there there are people who do homeopathic only and who do it well honestly it's what works for you you've got to figure it out yeah it's kind of hard but and again that goes with giving things a try and not giving up on something right after it doesn't work right away yeah not being God. discouraged when something doesn't I, go the way we want it to. I've gone without pain meds before. I mean, it's not hard. Like, I, mean, I don't it's not function pleasant, as, no, but yeah. it's not like. <sighs> like when I've done it, it's been with like extra activity and gabapentin yeah. and other things mm-hmm. like other tools. But like, it, like I said, it doesn't have to be a permanent thing. Yeah. It literally exactly. is a tool that you can use as you see fit. Uh-huh. Use it to get through your day and get active and be healthy. Yeah. Well, and be communicative with your medical team. Yeah. Because you will. You'll come up ag- against people who are like, meds are the only way. And then you're going to come up on people who are like, eh, you're taking a lot of meds. Let's try to mitigate that. Well, and doctors, it'll just be like, opioid crisis. No, for you. Yeah. I mean, that happens. And that's part of doctor shopping is yeah, not finding one that will give you meds, but one that will at least communicate with you. Right. Right. And that's the big one. And then finding like what works for you. Yeah. Because we're weird. Just in general. Yeah, each as, one of the zebras is wired so differently. Yeah. And we process medication bizarre. <laughs> we just do. We know okay. this. We process anesthesia weird. We process meds weird. We process friggin' <laughs> our emotions weird. I take it out on the by, mic like, randomly. By beating, uh, disrespect your environment. Disrespecting my surroundings. <laughs> there you go. Disrespect your surroundings. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to punch you in the face. <laughs> it's just a poof. Take that. It caught my ring. <laughs> Kind of deep love my finger one day. Oh, it's gonna happen. No, <laughs> be like, hmm. So that's what's in there. That's the grossest wound I think ever. I don't. I don't care. Ugh. Yeah. No, thank you. Nope. No, no, no. Nope. So that's what that looks like. <laughs> huh. Should and I then go you to the pass ER? out? <laughs> You're like, All right. Will they take me seriously if I go? <laughs> like. <laughs> No. Nothing we can do for you. Go home. Okay. <laughs> Just put it back on. Quit being a baby. <laughs> I mean. You're like, but the fingernail's gone. The imposter syndrome's so strong. <laughs> I, I could I could see myself talking Duct myself out. Duct tape it to your face. Yeah. Be like, I, it, no. it's fine. You know what? I'll just I'll just go without skin. <laughs> I don't need skin on it. Who needs skin? You don't need skin. I'll just duct tape and <laughs> paper towels. This skin you speak of? <laughs> Paper towels, ew. That was that was the fix in Deming. I, there were plenty of times. Oh, you just that... get liquid latex, dip your finger in. <laughs> That's your new skin. <laughs> oh, I am so sorry to people who are going to be sensitive to this. <laughs> like just imagining. That. Oh no, thank you. It's so inappropriate. I laugh at like all of the like the worst things. <laughs> I find myself doing it like other people will be telling me serious things or what they consider serious and things. And then you laugh. And I start laughing. Yeah. And then they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I do that too. And you're like, I'm really sorry. I'm not laughing at you, but it's funny. I've I've apologized many times. I've done the actual like verbal like, ooh, I'm not laughing at it's I'm weird. <laughs> Everything's funny. It just is. That's true. Sorry. But I'm not really sorry. I'm just sorry you can't see it. Truth. <laughs> and they were like, 
um, ma'am, this is a funeral. <laughs> God. And you're like, I, oh no. <laughs> <clears throat> this is what happens when you don't sleep. <laughs> Shut up. I'm one to talk. I didn't gonna sleep say. either. <laughs> I haven't been. I've been like up until after one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And pinging off the walls, like wide awake, wide awake. That's what I did last week. I remember I was I'm telling, like, telling everyone on the weekly recap that I I was up all night working you're on like, magic I wanna cards. I want to do stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna reorganize everything and then re reorganize because I didn't like it and like then tried to sleep at five in the morning, <laughs> and fall asleep at seven. Time to wake up sleep. <laughs> Time to sleep. There was a map on the back of the end of the <laughs> Declaration of Independence. You have four days to send a message. To Jojo C was been shrunken down. It's it's floating through the bottle. Pacific Ocean in a glass bottle. <laughs> Some more TikTok fun for you guys. Look that one up. It's and great. and look up the sandwich one. Sid and Olivia. They're freaking funny. I don't know the origin of the other one. Just look up, you know. I don't know. Dora, make me a sandwich. <laughs> that should work. <laughs> it's great. She gets smacked in the face with a sandwich. It's my favorite. <laughs> the sound it makes is just the best. You'll have to send it to me so I can like find it. I had to go back and watch the This Is Five Gum. I watch that one all the time. <laughs> I, I had go to like, back. unlike it and relike it so it's closer to the top of all my stuff. Because <laughs> I'm a lunatic. This is what it's like to chew five gum. <laughs> What's it like? Describe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We're just, we're in a cycle. <laughs> this is where the sanity starts to break I was going to say, it's like the, the longer format works, but by the end of it, we're just so worn out and <laughs> off the wall. It's like, you know, it's time it's to stop. fun because our first half is like serious. Yeah. And then the last piece is like, <laughs> the last piece let's is, stick around. So how is everyone actually doing? <laughs> We got the info out. We shared our life experiences. Let's get real. Yeah. <laughs> real funny. Ha 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 ha. But looks aren't everything. She's saying I'm ugly. No, I said you're funny looking. The there's a difference. The best part of the podcast is not my face. So there's that. Clearly it's the cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about sending those as TikToks. The, uh videos i sent you this morning yes do it <laughs> i'm embarrassed though but we'll see. <laughs> they were funny i was i was, he was tormenting me while i was getting ready dude i was up at seven and i was ready to go i'm like it's seven o'clock it's time to go and then it was 10 o'clock and i had set everything up and i was like fuck i have to wait an hour because i thought it, i thought it was an hour later than it was so i was like it's 11 and it wasn't no it was not 11 so i sent her tiktoks or tiktoks i sent her videos <laughs> Of me saying, and my co-host I'm isn't just here. Being belligerent. I'm waiting. It's ten o'clock. <laughs> She's supposed to be here at eleven. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> and then I just laughed, and then he gets back on the camera. <laughs> yes. She's belligerent. It was funny. Here I am, patiently waiting, desperately, <laughs> desperately patient, desperately patient. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying oh, to think. If there was since last else. week, yeah, we we hit fifty last week, which was fantastic, and we're so excited. It's amazing, but we're also growing pretty quickly. So, um, again, I want to put out there: please, 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 leave us some comments. Let us know how we're doing. Yeah, let us know if there are topics, um, or problems or experiences you want us to talk about or rehash or go further in depth with, um. Today's content was sponsored by a comment. Yes, essentially. <laughs> so let us know what you guys want to hear, and we will hopefully be able to deliver. Right. In we'll our either own put silly it in a way. podcast or respond to you directly if it's yep. necessary. Yes. If it's dire. So interact, like, share, subscribe, hang out. <laughs> She's selling her soul. Don't. <laughs> Every time I say it, I die a little bit on the inside. Every YouTuber does. I'm like, <laughs> that makes you a real YouTuber. That's why I don't say it. I don't want to be a real YouTuber. This is just everything that I do for me. <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Why do you do it? I don't know. Don't worry about it, it. it seemed fun. <laughs> fun, fun sun or How Saturday did project. How this podcast begin? Well, you see, <laughs> I wanted to buy a microphone. <laughs> and I, I justified it by saying I was going to podcast with it. And then we did. And we did. <laughs> God 
damn it. I can't stop quoting Bone Burnham, but got a problem. I know. That's why I put that out there. I hate you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> kill me it's now. Bo Burnham and Trevor Moore. Yeah. Because there's a meteor coming. <laughs> it's going to blow us all up. So we need to just, you know, maybe stop talking. <laughs> I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. I sent I that to my mom. Do that. At first, she thought I was being like a punk about it. <laughs> She's like, oh, people are so sensitive. And I was like, That's the point of the, the song. <laughs> let me leave here. Let me send you the song. And then she was like, I get it. It's perfect. That's my favorite part of that song, too. Yes. I don't want to do that. There's got to be another way. Yes. <laughs> Never. <laughs> we should probably call it. I think so, because now it's just Bo Burnham hour. <laughs> it's time to go. We gotta go watch Inside. And if you haven't Again, watched Inside, watch Inside. Still some more. <laughs> if you're a person who has a uh, mental illness, watch Inside and feel some feels, and uh, and then get back maybe to use us. it as a tool to show your family what it's like to have severe depression. Yay! <laughs> I need streamers. <laughs> depression. Oh my god! Oh, Gotta make I a want, sparkly depression. Yeah, I want pocket graphic. glitter. Oh my god! Yes. So we can be like. Poof. <laughs> Do I tell you about my new idea no. for like shaming people publicly? Oh, when they're obnoxious. Yes. So instead of like letting people get away with crap, when people are gross or nasty or horrible in public, you take some po- like pocket glitter and you anoint them douchebag. Yep. And from then on, you're like, hey, glitter guy just touched me inappropriately. And now he's marked with glitter. Get him. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jeff. Get him. All right. We're calling it. All right. <laughs> we're, we're not even. There's no rails. No. <laughs> <laughs> like Thanks she said. for hanging out. Yeah. We appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. I can almost podcast from down here. <laughs> you can podcast in whatever position you want. There's no wrong position. I just, I'm going to, yeah, there we go.